Hi everybody! In this video demonstration, I am going to be walking you through how to create a design plan for your whistle. Now we are going to be using the new technique, and we are also going to be building on what you already know. So what we are going to do for this is we're going to take everything that we've already learned and we're going to apply it to this project here. And this is the last project that you will create for this class before we move into glazing. It is your own original design and it's not anybody else's. One key point to this project is that you have to make sure that your project can produce a sound. And since we are working with creating a whistle, it has to be able to do just that and whistle. So if it isn't able to make a sound, you won't receive full credit. If you're able to follow the steps and review the demonstration videos, then you will have a 100% chance of making sure that your whistle can actually whistle. So since this is our last project that we're going to be creating, we are going to work with the principle of design called unity. So previously we've worked with pattern, we've worked with rhythm and movement, and we have worked a little bit with unity. Um, we've used the elements of art to build these principles of design. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, to just continue that and we're going to bring everything together. So when you create a cohesive piece of artwork, you want everything to look like it belongs. You don't want anything to look like an afterthought or like it's out of place. And unity is a really big part of doing that. If you are able to take your elements of art, piece them all together like a puzzle and make a complete puzzle, then you have achieved unity in your artwork. So what I want you to do is looking back in Google Classroom, I want you to refer to the definition that we learned about unity at the beginning of the semester. So you can Google this definition, but I've noticed in your past work that some of you have struggled a little bit with that when you Google a term um, and you're not getting the correct term as it applies to art. So I want you to go back into Google Classroom to look for that definition and it is located under the references for principles of design. The definition for unity that we will use for this project plan is when an artwork looks complete or is, seems to be complete and together. This means that everything has a place and it belongs in the artwork. Since we are creating a whistle, you are going to have to really kind of problem solve with this to make your spout look like it belongs on your project and that it doesn't stick out. Now, there are certain scenarios where you can have the spout look like a spout, but you really wanna make it kind of disguised a little bit so that it looks like it belongs there and it kind of tricks the viewer. We'll talk about this a little bit more when we get to the final concept. But for right now, you're just gonna follow the steps. You're going to list four possible projects that you could create. Again, you cannot copy any of the projects that I create for my demonstrations. You do not want to copy anybody else that you're sitting next to. You do not want to copy anybody off the internet. You want to come up with your own unique design. So in order to get full credit, you want to make sure that you are doing that. So my first idea that I've created is Hello Kitty, because I love cats. I love Hello Kitty. Um, I, can think of a way that I could disguise the spout to make it look like everything belongs. The second one is a flower. The third I've selected is a balloon. And then my fourth and final selection that I will make will be a star. Now, these are just ideas. When you get to the point where you're gonna sketch out your ideas, you're going to be able to see what will work and maybe what won't work. But you always wanna go with your favorite. If you pick your favorite, then it's going to be really easy to spend the time working on this project because you're going to be more attached to it. Like I've mentioned before in any of the other projects, if you pick something that you don't really love because you think it's going to be easy, more than likely, nine times out of ten, it turns out that the project is actually not as easy as you thought it was going to be and you end up don't liking it as you're not, excuse me, you do not like the project in the end as much as you thought you would. So always go with your initial instinct and pick the one that you like the most. 
So now after I've made my list of what I'm going to create, I'm going to sketch out my ideas. So I want to make sure that I'm not spending a whole lot of time here, but that I can kind of start to sketch out my thumbnail sketches to see which project will work the best for me. So I'm just going to make sure that according to my list, one, two, three, and four, I put the correct drawing in the right box that matches my list. So for box number one, I'm going to sketch a picture of Hello Kitty. For box number two, I'm going to sketch a flower. And for box number three, a balloon. And box number four, a star. If you mix and match these, it's a little bit harder for me when I go through grading your papers. They're unorganized and I don't know which one you're selecting exactly or which one belongs with which, so you just kind of want to match the number to the box to the picture. It just keeps everything a little bit more organized and it actually helps you along the way. So in my thumbnail sketches, I'm starting to think about where I could put the spout or if I even want a spout at all. So for this one, I am thinking that maybe the bow that Hello Kitty wears could be the spout, or I could possibly just leave the spout off and not have a spout. So you wanna start thinking about that when you are sketching out your pictures. For my next picture, I'm going to be drawing a hydrangea, which has a lot of little flowers clustered together. So I'm still gonna start with a circular shape and I'm going to just place the flowers all over the circle so it looks like a bunch. It looks like they're all growing together. And for this one, I'm gonna hide the spout underneath the flowers and I'm just going to build around it. So this one actually will not have a spout that is designated for pushing the air through the project. And a little further on in the demonstration, I will show you what I mean by having a spout and not having a spout. Um, if you know what a whistle looks like, uh, you'll know that just a basic metal whistle, if you Google it, has a little air hole where the air has to pass through the top and into the metal little structure so that it can make a noise. If you're not setting up your project correctly, then it's not going to make a sound. So in the last part, or the middle portion of my demonstration, um, part two of building the whistle, you'll see what I'm talking about when I talk about where I'm going to place the spout and the angle at which the spout has to go in order to make a sound. So for my second one, I'm not going to have a spout necessarily. I'm just going to have a place where I can have an air hole. Now for the balloon, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not going to have a spout included on this one. I'm just going to have an opening um, so that it can actually look like I'm blowing up the balloon when I am actually passing the air through it and creating the spout. So for that one, I actually am going to have a spout, so I misspoke. I'm going to have a spout for number three, not a spout for number two, and a spout for number one. For my fourth one, this one's a little bit more challenging. Um, I'm going... With the whistle, you have to make sure that the shape is rounded, but even if you want something like a star that has a point to it, you still have to start with a rounded shape and then you will shape it to a point after you have it cleaned up and smoothed out to the way that you want it. So for this one, this one will um, have a spout as part of the top and the air hole will be where the two ends connect or the two pieces connect. So as you can see from looking at all of my designs, every single one has a spout or does not have a spout, but you can't really tell. Um, those that do have a spout, the spout looks like it's a piece of the artwork. And that's really the goal that you're trying to achieve here is that you want the spout to look like it belongs on the art piece and it's not a separate piece to make a sound. So everything needs to blend together. So like I mentioned before, this is kind of like a little bit of a puzzle that you have to select your pieces and think about where you want the pieces to go in order to achieve the sound.
To give you an idea of what I'm talking about when I say you want to spell or you don't want to spell on your whistle, I have two examples that I'd like to show you. So the first example is a whistle with a spout and this one allows the air to pass over the top of the circle and then through the inside. And so what you want to achieve here in order to get a sound is you want the air to pass through so that it makes a whistling noise. Now this one does not have a spout and so it looks like when you apply the air to this that you're actually drinking the can of soda. So this is an example of a whistle without a spout and as you blow the air through it to create the sound it'll pass over the top and into the soda can so to speak so that it makes a sound. So you want to think about which one will help you achieve unity in your project. So for some of you, attaching a spout like this will work with your project because you won't be able to tell that it's an actual spout and it can kind of be a part of the art piece and as you look through, you can see what I'm talking about. You want the air to pass through the top and in through the bottom. And so some of you will be able to use this style to create your whistle while some of you may want to use the style of the Coke can where there is no real spout but you are still able to pass air through the top and into the sculpture itself. So now that I have my thumbnail sketches, I'm going to decide which one's my favorite and why. So again, when you select your favorite, you're just going to very simply tell me why is it your favorite? Um, just like I explained to you the reasons that I picked the four that I did, I'm now going to explain to you why I would pick the first one in my design plan. So my favorite is sketch number one, obviously. So sketch number one is going to be my favorite because why? Because I love Hello Kitty, I love cats, and anytime I can create a project that shows that, I'm going to select that as my project. So this project is also unique to me because it tells the viewer, whoever's looking at my art piece, a little bit about me. So you also want to pick something that reflects your personality. So that is why I'm selecting this project. And I also included in my description that it will help me with disguising the spout because she wears the little bow. So I included that as well. Now we're going to look at the next question which is what elements of art did you use to create unity within your design? Where are those elements? So remember, we have seven elements of art to create our principles of design. We have line, shape, texture, value, form, space, and color. So obviously you're not going to use all of them in one art piece, and that's okay. But you wanna tell me how you've selected the art or excuse me, the elements of art to create your design. Why did you select those? Where are they? So are you able to point them out in your artwork? You can also think of this as a puzzle piece. How did you use the building blocks, which are the elements of art, to create an entire picture, which is the principle of design? So remember, our elements of art are our building blocks, if we build with those blocks, we are creating our principles of design. So we're working with the principle of unity. So how am I using my elements, line, shape, texture, value, form, space, and color to create unity? That's the goal of this question. Are you able to identify where they are and how you use them? So I'm going to answer the question to give you an example of what I'm looking for, for this answer. And I'm just very simply stating you want to identify where they are first and just talk about how it makes an entire art piece. So in my whistle, I use the elements of art, line, shape, and form to create unity. Now, obviously, I am going to use color too. I could add that to my answer, but I, I really want to focus on the elements that I'm using right at this moment. And so line, shape, and form are the big elements that I'm using here. There's no texture, there's no value, um, 
just very simple. There's no real space either, uh, uh, unless you consider, you know, of course I could say that the project itself is positive space and everything around it is negative. I'm also, you know, using negative space on the inside to create the whistle sound, but um, you won't really see that as part of my design. I want you to really focus on the design that you're creating. And so then I'm just going to talk about where the elements are. And so I could just very easily answer the question and say I use line and shape to create the face details. I used form to create the overall whistle and also the spout. So these are just small examples to help you kind of get an idea of how you use the elements of art to talk about the principles of design in your writing. And I know that sometimes that can be a little bit hard, um, but really all you're doing is just identifying your elements, where they are, and how they're bringing everything together. And if you need to look further at this example, you are more than welcome to. I will have it for you to view. But again, you want to talk about your artwork, not about somebody else's artwork. So make sure you are looking at your artwork when you are answering the question and thinking about how you used the elements of art to create your design. So once you have that, you're going to really focus now on your final concept sketch. So this is the final that will be approved in order to get you your clay and move you on to the next stage. So just like I've done with all of your other projects and your plans, I always look at your plan first, give you approval, and then I have you move on. This way you have a roadmap so you know where you're going from start to finish. It's really easy if you don't have a plan in place or you change your plans along the way to get lost and to take a longer time. So at this point, you want to spend more time on the detail of your final concept sketch because that's really going to help you in the building of this project. So I want you to have a couple different views here so that you can really work through the building process of this. We are going to build this in three different pieces or different stages, but they're very small stages. It's nothing like building the cube, but you are going to build in different stages for this project. So I'm going to look at a reference image while I draw my picture, because for me, I have to visually see. And I know that my thumbnail sketch was done from memory, so obviously you can tell the bow is on the wrong side. The placement of her eyes was a little bit off. So I'm really going to look at this reference because I want this project or this final detail sketch to really guide my project. So I am going to create a front facing view where I can see the front of my whistle. And then I'm going to sketch out my top view, so what it would look like from the top, and then the spout view. And I'll talk a little bit more about why I want you to include the top and the spout a little bit later on when we get to that portion. But for this part, I want to just have a general front view of my whistle. So for the front view, you want to draw exactly what it's going to look like when it's done. Now, if you have a project that has two different sides, front and back, um, you may want to include the back portion as well, so you would have four views instead of the three, but because the back of my project is just going to be playing, there's not going to be any detail on it, I'm only including the front view of this. But you really want to think about that if you are including something different on the opposite side, you really want to add that to your design plan. Having extra details in your planning process never hurts. So now I'm going to spend some time here sketching out the details of my plan. And I'm going to really focus on the placement of the eyes, the nose, the ears, the bow, the whiskers, and you'll see I'll be doing a little bit of visual measuring to make sure everything lines up. Um, you really don't want to rush your final project or your final sketch. If you know you, The quick thumbnails are really where you just kind of map everything out really quickly and kind of think about what you initially want to do. And then once you've really figured it out, like, okay, I know I want to go with my first idea, that's when you can spend a little bit more time 
really sketching out that concept so that you have a really clear plan and you don't have to waste a lot of time once you start going with your project. Next, I'm going to map out what the top view is going to look like. So this is going to be, it's not going to necessarily look like the front of my picture. You may not be able to really tell what it looks like, but it's going to give you an idea of where your entrance for the air should go. So you definitely want to include this in your drawing. So what I'm doing is I'm picturing what this is going to look like if I was to be looking down on this and looking at it from a top view. So I want to kind of map out where the ears are going to go because I know those are going to have a direct relationship to where the entrance is. So you can kind of think of it like this. The entrance for my whistle is going to be on the very top. Think of a whale. A whale has a hole on the top of it where the where it breathes and so I'm going to draw this kind of like I'm looking at the top of a whale because that's where the air is going to pass through my whistle. So you kind of want to take that into consideration. You're drawing where the hole is on your project and you really need to know where that is because it can have an effect on your overall project. If you don't place the hole in the correct in the correct spot then it will affect um, the rest of your design. So now I'm going to draft up what my spout will look like. And so what I've um, done in my thumbnail sketch was planned out whether or not this is or is not going to have a spout. And I've decided that it is. So one of the ears is going to act like the spout. 
So you're not necessarily going to be able to tell that it is a spout, but that is actually where the spout is. And so that's a key point in creating unity. So I'm creating a side view of this. So this would be like I took my project, I built it, and then I cut it directly in half. And so I'm going to show you an example of what I'm talking about. This is a side view. So this is what I'm looking at. I want to be able to see like a cross section of this project. So this was a bowl that I had thrown on the wheel. And in order to see what the sides look like, I cut it directly in half from the top. And so that's the view that I want to get when I draw this part of the whistle, because this again is going to have a big effect on whether or not my whistle is able to make sound. So if I was to build my whistle, from the front view, looking at it from the front view, and I took a wire tool and I cut it directly down the center, this is what I would see. So it's really important to know where the spout is in relationship to the opening that you're creating, because if you create an opening and then let's say your spout is placed in the wrong position, then you're really gonna have a hard time with the whistle making any type of noise. And you wanna make sure that the air passes into the project and then up over the top of the project. So it's almost like a fork in the road. The air is going to split where the opening is. So where I drew the hole on my top view, that's where the air is gonna split. And I'm using the spout just to help me push that air into my project. So that's what I'm using the spout for. So some of you ne won't necessarily need that in your design, but in mine, I do. So it's really important to know where your spout placement is in relationship to the air entrance so that you can place everything correctly. So you're going to spend a little bit of time thinking about where you want to place this, how it's going to be in relationship to the overall design, and then you are going to begin building your whistle once you get your plan approved.